Welcome to this week's WTF. That's right. This is the week Santa comes to town. I'm so excited to see Santa. Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh, how excited are you, Jen? I know him. You know him. How excited are you, Jen? I'm very excited. Are Can you, you tell? <laughs> no, I can tell you're annoyed <laughs> by what's happening with my guest. That's for sure. Do you still want Santa to bring you those Ugg boots that you, you, you have you changed your mind? The Ugg boots will be fine. That's it? Yeah. All right. We'll get a real treat today, Jen. Oh, gosh. So this is on you. Hit that intro and give me an intro, will you? Go ahead. Oh. Uh, welcome back to Where's the Focus podcast with Dan Manginelli. Glad you're here. Hope you could stay a while. Last couple episodes for the year to jumpstart the life you always had in mind in 2023. Oh my gosh. What do you think of that? That was, that was, that was, see, funny that our intro music is the guest that we hear today. The lead singer, the band Farmer, big deal record producer. He's produced many of songs you've all heard. Um, he's doing some kind of A&R now, we're going to find out. Um, he's producing, he's touring, but all around swell guy. How about we welcome in Marshall Altman to the, to the, and the, and the kids go wild, buddy. Welcome back, pal. Hi. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah, buddy. Thank you. It's the second and happy day. Hanukkah to you too, my friend. Is it the second day of Hanukkah, right? Did you like the candles last night? I did. I and I, I roasted did. marshmallows. Am I supposed to roast 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 marshmallows on the candle? They're kosher, yeah. Oh, got it. Got it. So what is what was your present today for the second day of Hanukkah? My present to the world is being on this podcast with you. <laughs> Dude, you were so annoyed. Just just for the listeners there, it took me had some technical difficulties because he decided to. Yeah. Technical difficulties for uh, 36 years, I guess. Yeah. Might be longer. Uh, listen, you know what? Uh, welcome back. I know that you're a big time music producer, but what are you doing now with AR? For those who don't understand, AR uh, stands hey, hey. for artist and. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Let Repet me ask you a question. Repertoire. Artist and repertoire. <laughs> hey, repertoire. let me ask you a question. Repertoire. 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 Rep artist. Let me, ask, and repertoire. Let, me, let me ask you a question. Yes, please do. Yeah. Whose idea was it the blue shirt and the blue sign? Was that to make your eyes, your blue eyes look, look they, like they were popping? They're popping. Look at them. Pop. They just, now it's like you can't, no one can even understand what's going on. Cause if you're watching this on zoom, you're pretty sure they're a little red. <laughs> yeah. From getting mad at you. Uh, answer my questions. So um, you're, now you're doing A and R, which stands for artist and repertory. Say it uh, again. You almost got it. Artist and repertoire. There you uh, go. Uh, what is that exactly? That uh, besides your big time singing, music producing, and all the other stuff, tell me what A and R and what that consists of. By the way, so A and R is um, it's a it's a it's a it's a function of the record world basically a and r people find new artists find new talent sign them to record deals um that's the artist portion the repertoire portion uh relates to music repertoire is the body of creative work that an artist a painter a writer it's the repertoire it's the it's the stuff they perform gotcha you know those big words that i don't yeah. know but you're doing something cool with it though it's it's not just your regular label at repertoire right i mean you're doing it's got it's got more to do on on streams and stuff. Am I right, or am I? Well, just... that's not you know. Well, well, that's definitely my my job as a as an A and R person is to find new artists, help them make the best records possible, and then um, get them out into the world. And the goal is to have as many people hear them as possible, whether it's through streaming or radio or any of the other platforms that people are listening on. So, in in effect. Yes, I am trying to sign artists who get heard by a lot of people. But the record company that I work for, which is called Network Music Group, we have a pretty large staff of about 175 people working for the company around the world. And there are people who are much better at, quote unquote, exploiting the music that the artists I work with and all the other artists on Network make. Um, my job is to not... I don't call the the digital service providers, the DSPs, Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon. I'm not I'm not reaching out to them to get them to play 
to to spin more of my artist music. That's not my role in the company. My role is to bring in new talent, help them make the best records possible, and also work with with the artists that are on the label and really try and help them achieve their artistic goals. In a sense, that's what A&R is. I mean, I, obviously, I need to be working and bringing in artists who are going to get heard or else I'll be out of a job. No, it makes, makes with the majority of all music is now I mean, streamed more than anything else, right? I mean, that's where well, you place your spins, yes. as you call it, right? It's a, yeah, it's incredibly difficult to get. Most of the music that people are listening to around the world, you can't go into a record store. There are very few record stores now, as we know. Um, it's very difficult to go in and find a CD or um, or uh, or or a LP, a vinyl LP of every single artist in the world, because there are so many artists releasing music right now. Because the barriers to entry, meaning prior to this digital age that we're in now, the streaming age, as it were, um, you would need a record company to manufacture and distribute your music. That is no longer necessary. You don't need a record company to give you a loan to make a record anymore. Essentially, in, in the past, record companies would give artists loans and um, they would own the majority, record companies would own the majority of the of the. The, the 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 majority percentage of the music forever and ever um an artist would own a small percentage and record labels had all the control now because modern technology has allowed people has allowed artists to make records that sound pretty great from a laptop using logic or any of the other programs um that has sort of removed the ba one one huge barrier of entry uh, um of getting your music heard and then looking at the 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 digital music sphere apple music spotify amazon title um anybody can put their music up on those websites anybody sorry anybody can put their their music up on those streaming services now at a very low cost so because we have to keep you to like 50 minutes a second yeah, yeah. or less because you, sure. your last podcast took two and a half hours because your your explanations take you know i don't know three hours is that no mm, okay Okay, I'll keep it short. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm just upset. You. Look at your face. Go ahead. Ask me the next question. <laughs> go ahead. Hey, uh, Jennifer, you might want to ratchet down that light on Dan's forehead. I'm sorry. To, actually, I should put my sunglasses on. Are you getting blinded? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Ask me the next question, smart guy. Go oh, ahead. God. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm ready. So, uh, who's the answer is no. Go ahead. Ask me the next one. Whose job, whose job is it to make sure that yes. your goes higher up? So you get them on Spotify. Whose job is it to make sure that people are listening to it on Spotify? Do they push it as advertising? Is it just pop up on YouTube or pops up on something? Is there a whole separate part of- I mean, you really want a short answer to this? Really? <laughs> kind of. But give me, give me the sure. long Okay. There are people, there are, there are people inside every record company whose job it is to work with their digital providers, with their partner, with their partners. We call Spotify and Apple music and to, and Amazon music and title. They're our digital partners, right? So our job is to try and work with them and let them know what our biggest priorities are in the hopes that they will position that music either through playlisting right which mm -hmm. is i don't know which music service you use but every music service has a vehicle where you log in that music service understands the kind of music you dan listen to on a regular basis so if you click on let's say you're an apple apple music user you click on click on apple music because you listen to mostly pat boone um what else do you like you like pat boone i know you love mario lanza Right. Strides and huge strides and fan, huge Manilow fan. Right. Because you're listening to all that music, uh -huh. if there's some new piece of music that relates to those oddly weird things that you like as much as you do, it may well pop up when you sign into Apple Music. It may say, Hey Dan, we know you're into all this weird music. So here's something weird that you might like. And then if you click on it and actually listen to it, 
right? It's a new piece of music. You click on it and listen to it. The algorithm inside Apple Music or Spotify or Tidal or Amazon will start to will start to send you some new music from that artist. And after that, after you become a fan of that artist, it may try to open up the floodgates a little bit more and send you other new music as well. The the nature think think of think of the digital service providers the DSPs as we call them in the music business, like it's, it's similar to radio, but it's not really like radio. Their goal, Apple music's goal is to have you keep listening. Right. Once you come <laughs> in to listen to, 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 um, you know, midnight by Barbara Streisand, which we all know is one of your favorites. Once you come in to listen to that, they're going to get you some new music and, and who would that be from? Like that. Who would it be from? Oh, After oh I don't know. I don't know what kind of no? you know, Dan. No. I do. Uh, um, you but, listen, music yeah. I listen to, buddy. Who are you kidding? Is it harder now, you think? Um, before it was a record deal, like when you got signed or when, when other people got signed, is it harder to get a record deal? Because they're not really record deals anymore. You're you're just oh. basically finding them to put them on to try to get as much exposure through the streaming sites, correct? I mean, they're record deals. The, you know, you, my, the company I work for, Network, we do licensing deals with, with our artists, which means the artist owns 100% of their intellectual property, of their songs. Mm-hmm their recordings we license it for a term it's a fairly long term but we license it we get 50 percent. they get 50 percent. But, but what we do is we try to add a tremendous amount of value to the catalog um to that music so that when it gets handed back to the artist it's worth exponentially more than it was when we started we make money as as we have 50 percent of of the of this work over a certain amount of time if we can really broadly increase the audience in a huge way it benefits us and then it benefits the artist and at the end of the term that 100 percent goes back to the artist record deals still happen major labels are still out there their goals are very different than ours in that major labels kind of sell the lottery ticket the the of oh, the fairy godmother i wish i would could be a rock star um, you're sort of in an all or nothing proposition when you sign to a major label, Sony, Warner, um, Universal. When they sign you, they own the music m- the overwhelming majority of the time. They own the music 85, I would say 75 to 85% of any particular piece of music they own forever and ever. Now, there are artists who can negotiate deals that are better than that, but for the majority, they own it. So their job is to basically find the artists who have the most hype around them at any given time, try and sign them to a record deal, and then exploit whatever's going on for that artist, be it in TikTok or Instagram, or maybe just in the DSPs in general. What, What Network tries to do is we're not looking to... We're not looking to sell anybody a lottery ticket. We're not We're not making these gigantic promises. Our goal is to constantly grow our artists' catalog in its reach in the digital service, in the digital the, the digital realm. Sorry. We're yeah. trying to get more people listening consistently over time and build up that catalog so that at the end of the term, as I mentioned, it's, it's ex- exponentially more valuable than it was at the beginning. And then it gets handed back to the artist. Makes sense. But- it is hard to get a record deal. It's even harder now to get a record deal than it was before because record record companies are not taking risks on artists who have amazing amounts of promise, but no foothold in the digital sphere, no foothold, no fans, no, um, no exposure in the digital service provider realm. So on a different on a different realm, and that just explained it tremendously. And obviously, the record business is kind of a difficult business any way you look at it. But when you hear people in all kinds of, I don't know if it's movies, if it's in the record business, if it's in business, they have this kind of big break, um, you know, or something in the life that gave them the opportunity. Like all of a sudden, so you got into the record business, or I got into my business, and there's that one. You know, everybody tells that story, yeah. like mm-hmm. whatever it was. What do you feel like when you're your entry? Or just anything, what was your, what do you feel like all of a sudden this was a break to get the network or what it would, what would you feel like that story? My personal break for yeah. me or yeah. for an artist? No, it's going to get personal now. Forget record business. Uh, I think We've known each other for 38 years. I mean, yeah. I, I, I think for me, the biggest, the biggest break I probably had was, um, was the really the first record deal I got, you know, we, you and I put together that 
eight by ten of me looking all moody and fought the A and R. Looking all moody. It's exactly how you look. If you're watching this on Zoom, just take a look at that mug. It's one heck of a mood constantly. I, I think that was the biggest break. I mean, we didn't know what we were doing. We sent that we yeah. sent that package out to eleven hundred people and uh, in the fact that we got anybody to respond is a bit of a miracle. The fact that I got a record deal out of it, my first record deal out of it, was also something very, very unexpected. Obviously, you know, a door, a door opening like that um, is only as valuable as you walking through it with intent and purpose. So, you know, I got a, I got that break and then managed to turn that into a couple of other small breaks here and there, and then got another record deal and. Um, through a series of, you know, mostly through my own impatience and and um, probably undiagnosed adult uh, uh, attention deficit disorder back then, I ended up... It wasn't uh, undiagnosed. I, I diagnosed you quite early. You, yeah, sure you did. Yeah, because you're a medical professional. I, 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 that. Oh, my God. Um, oh, can you start calling me doctor, please? It'd be Dr. Manginelli to you. Or, you I'm, know, maybe I'm doctor. Not, I'm not... Dr. D, Dr. It can't be Dre because there's really Dr. Dumbass, maybe that I'll call you. But um, the, you know, it, yes, let's, every, go, let's go to a great story about us because that's what okay. people want to know. Oh, let's do that. That'll be great. Hey, now you got to keep it PC. I, I just, I'm going to tell the story because I, don't I can't be dumbass. No, dumbass is fine. We're, no. we're, we're, the um, fuck is not okay. Well, not highly, highly wanted. Use. No, okay. With the er, it makes it complete. Settle down, Beavis. Fuck so, not. <laughs> just, bleep, just bleep it all. I'm going to have to. It's hard enough to do this on Zoom. So settle down for a second. So <laughs> listen, how we met is you transferred. I'm going to tell the story. You transferred into uh, into the high school that I was in California from New York. And I think you were kind of probably, I'm getting sophomore summer would be, be about right. And you came out to the football <laughs> field. And mm -hmm. me being the jackass that I was, I thought I'd make you feel as uncomfortable as possible. Uh, and being the new Don't kid. Don't forget about torturing me. Don't forget about torturing me for like Four or five months before then, yeah. And I thought I'd be funny, which which you, I wasn't. And that's why I'm going to tell this uh, is a good story, by the way. I told my friends, you know, as we were taking it a day, watch this as I walked over to you and said the most asinine thing, which I won't repeat, nor will you. And um, I'm sure you were thinking at that moment, like, man, I want out of this school and I don't want to be on this team. But you handled kind of me and my comment with such an educated discussion and I think from that point on, we were kind of like kindred spirits from that day on. Um, I, I mean, it kind of how I remember it in in the same way, without going too much into detail of me being a judge. Yeah, definitely. And I think that um, one of the bigger things, and us being friends, and this is kind of because it's, you know, Christmas time or Hanukkah, I'm kind of, you know, bearing the honesty of Dan. You kind of taught me that there was always a bigger picture, um, you know, as a friend. And the one big thing I remember, which you're not going to, you're going to remember it in some way. Is that uh, you're saying to me, you know, like, hey, listen, buddy, listen, you're holding court in the quad, which is really the bowl, right? You're holding court and you're influencing people. But rather than thinking of running the time we're out of class, we can run the school. And I'm thinking, what, what are you talking about? And you said, we could take over student council. <laughs> we could get our friends, have them run, um, and then we can make decisions and help make decisions about the school and get to influence them. And I said to you, that sounds completely lame. I, I'm pretty sure I also I'm pretty sure pretty sure I also said we could be out of class a lot. That's exactly what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I doing. said that sounds lame, but you said you're only gonna have to go to two classes and two of them are gonna be student council. And I went, I'm in. This is the greatest thing ever. Uh and then you became uh we kind of ran the, the gamut. You became the California state representative, um, which was, you know. A real position, and I became the commissioner of public relations, which yours was way more legit, and mine was a way to get out of class and meet teachers and tell them how great they were and bring them gifts on the company's or the the school's dime, which yeah. got me, which got me on honor roll, by the way. You know, I just want to let you know. <laughs> and, being on honor roll is one of the greatest travesties of just. How about ever, how but... about maybe doing morning announcements? Did you? How was it? Yeah. Were you sitting in class when I had to do those morning announcements? No, I was always in there with you. Do you not? Yeah, I do remember now. Now that you're saying it, that was um, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I, me and Matt would write the morning, and, and Dave would write the morning announcements, and you and. No, I read. I read them. Nicole read some you, of them. We're using names. Yeah, we shouldn't do that. We but would, she read. We would them. write them, and you would read yeah, them. But the the writing of them was we'd give snow reports, we'd ski reports, we'd give weather reports, surf reports, yeah, surf reports, and then they kind of tried to kick us out, being that the newspaper told us I was annoying, and then 
Yeah. Someone beat up that. Yeah, but everybody liked it. They, the, as I recall, the student body wanted us back because it was entertaining. Yeah. That was. Yeah. And yeah. I ran. I mean, I, I wrote everybody's speeches for our campaign. I conceptualized the the color uniform colors and design of all our at of all of our posters and all that stuff. Yeah, it was fun. I, I just knew it would be good for my college resume. And I knew it would be a great way to get us out of class and fun. And the 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 people that were running it um, were a little bit um, people that were running it prior to us were a little bit annoying, as I recall. Yeah, I had no I did not I did not like them. And I wanted to take them down a peg. And you were a very good vehicle to do that. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. So basically you used me for 38 years now. You've used me for things. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's the nature of our relationship. Purely transactional. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, where are we on time? I think I'm pretty much done with you in some cases. Anything else? You know, I think the story is like the fun part about this is, you know, everybody's got a story and certain things and everybody's brought together. Uh, with people they need to at the point of our life and you have to recognize it just like we just said you know on the opportunities and i don't think life's accidental um we're brought opportunities and the real key is to see the opportunities and take advantage of them i i was lucky enough to to get to meet you at you know at a young age and we got some opportunities in the music industry together and then we got the opportunities of you know meeting each other on a football field for for a period of time even though i you know didn't know that i was being a jackass but you know, thought it was funny. And apparently I just found out my wife thinks that my, my jokes aren't funny when they're at the, the, the expense of other people. Right? No, no. Yeah, no, that's okay. Don't listen to her. She's too sensitive. See, I, I, I thought so. Shh, this quiet time yeah. is a secret time. I thought so too. Right. I don't, it's okay. I don't think, I don't just, think she's listening. Just keep doing you. It's going to be fine. Ah, uh, the best part of today, I think is that, um, in your life where, where, you know, someone's a stranger at one time and we kind of push people away. So we all need to open our circle a little bit more and meet people that we don't know, because that could be the next person that's close to you in your life. You don't, you don't know that. And I think that's kind of what I wanted to get out of today of having you, having you on um, and learning a little bit about the record business. But I always want to hear your stories too. You got, uh, you got some, something good story for me in there. Anything? Maybe um, or something? Good, okay. good story. Good story. Well, let me think on that for two seconds, but I agree with you. And okay. I, what, what I will add to, I'll stack on top of what you're saying, the older we get, and what are you, you're 24 now, 25? 27. Don't be crazy. 27. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm 20. I'm still 25. So oh. Oh. Um, you always were a little older than me. Um, but uh, what I will say, the older we get, the harder it is to let new people into your life. The harder it is to be curious. Yeah. The harder it is to be interested. Um the harder it is to to obviously, and I'm not telling you anything you don't know, and whoever's watching this, I'm sure they get it too. But the harder it is to sort of break the habituations that we fall into with friendship, with relationships, with work, with just maintaining the hunger of youth, right? And the things that truly interest you. I will say for me, the people I've met over the years have had a massive impact on my life. Meeting you in in Huntington and having that opportunity and then really becoming real friends with you, you, you supported my, you supported my sort of crazy goal wish to be a musician. And that wind in my sails, I'm sure pushed me through some very difficult times in my life. And I think looking for, looking for the best in others allows us to look for the best in ourselves. Yeah. And I think that's in large part, um, our relationship has always been that way. I know you've always seen the best in you've always seen the best in me. I've always seen the best in you. And, and by proxy, we get to see the best in one another in ourselves. Um, and that that's been, I think that's a, I don't know if that's even a lesson that you can learn. I think it's something that you have to continually remind yourself of that the world is full of genuine, interesting, thoughtful, intelligent people who have color to add to your palette as, as a human being. And as you said, and so as you have color to add to theirs. 
Right. And so blue, hard. To well, obviously, you don't need any blue. You got plenty of blue on your palette today. And honestly, you just keep talking. Seriously. I mean, I just trying to make a good point with your. Point. Oh, wait, I got another point. <laughs> tied it, I wanted to tie it all together, but you just can't stop talking for crying out loud. You're going to tie something together. OK, I got to hear this. Wrap, let's do it. Wrap it up. I'll take it. There'll be no wrap up. I was going back to what you said about as we get older, our, our circle shrinks and it just really does. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it gets annoying when you're trying to start to meet new people or go new places. And I think that that's one thing that we've been lucked out on is that we've occasioned a lot together and do, I think the last, if you're talking about a good story, I think one of the last ones that even comes to my mind shortly is when it, we were in Key West, we were in Fort Lauderdale where we took over the uh, hot dog machine or hot dog guy. Oh, Key West. Yeah. That was great. That was a great night. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where that kid is too. <laughs> what possible guy would come up to two guys um, that come out of a bar and say, hey, can you watch my hot dog truck for, for a while? I mean, I don't really understand. Say, you know, I I think he overlooked your obvious lack of trustworthiness and saw my kind, gentle spirit and knew that I could trust. He could trust me because we, we sold more hot dogs than that guy would have ever sold that day. We, we were slinging hot dogs left. And I don't. I don't even think we ate one of those hot dogs. I don't think we even stole a hot dog, which would have. No. You know, it's crazy to me that some random guy just says, hey, can you, I'm going to go somewhere. Can you watch my hot dog truck for whatever it is for, for a minute? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I still I do think that's a good uh, post, um, you know, post business career for both of us. I mean, I, like I said, post, you know, I and dogs. Or something, or Marshall's okay. Wieners. I think Marshall's yeah. Wieners are probably better. So, well, I already, by the way, dot com. I already have it locked up. Marshall's Wieners dot com. That's yep. not. That's your OnlyFans page. That's not going to work for the WTFers. It's okay. Huh. What is the focus okay. has nothing to I'm do. I'm available with if you want. If you, you know, I'm there if you need me. Just saying. Marshall's Wieners. There's those little Vienna ones. You put them in little teeny buns. Yeah. How is it that you know about OnlyFans, by the way? Do you want to let me know about that? Come on. Everybody, I, I, you know what? I'm looking for sponsorships. If it's OnlyFans, I got to oh, Great. Gotta, That'd be a great sponsorship <laughs> for WTF. That or the network thing you're working for, you promoted it enough. I mean, you said the name six times. You think you at least get me some money. I kick some up top. Well, you kid? No, that's not going to happen. Sorry. Uh, I was like, got to keep asking. Always be closing, right? abc yeah. all right i think i've had enough of you thanks uh marshall you know as always it's you know i'm sure i get to talk to you it'll be hanukkah for the next what six days eight days 12 days how long the second day six more days yeah six more days so six so it's six and then there's two right so then you take the six seven, eight days okay. toes don't forget the toes <laughs> <laughs> that's what i only get past 10 it's hard when I get to 21. It's embarrassing. So thanks for your time, WTFers out there. I am blessed. It's Christmas time. Um, thanks for always being here. And as always, let's put us out, Jen. No, have let's fun. sing a song. Listen, that, listen out. This song's coming up. You hear this song? Uh, have fun and make dreams come true. She's far from home, but bring the color to my